uh, to understand the um, events uh, in Bulgaria in 1989, uh, we have to go some uh, years back to the Bulgarian history. Bulgaria was occupied uh, in the Second World War by the Soviet Army. There was a um, um, communist totalitarian regime. This regime in the first uh, months of the um, September, in the first uh, weeks after coming the Soviet army in September and October uh, 1944, uh, killed about 30,000 people. And after that, the opposition parties were forbidden. Uh, it was a resistant movement uh, in the, at the end of the 40s and beginning of the 50s of Guriani movement. Um, um, the members of this movement uh, usually were uh, young people from the agrarian union, social democrat, anarchists. Uh, uh, but this uh, movement was um, destroyed by strong terror by the communist regime. And uh, in the 60s, in the 70s, in the 80s, um, in Bulgaria there was not a strong opposition movement against the totalitarian rule. Uh, in the last years uh, of the regime, in the 80s, there was a terror of the regime to the Bulgarian Turks in the, um, 1985. And uh, that time, they uh, were established um, uh, some opposition groups, uh, but in 1989, there was in Bulgaria not so big opposition movement. I was a very young man that time. I was a student in sociology at the University of Sofia. And uh, with my other uh, friends who uh, were students, we organized like uh, opposition groups. So we were opposition, not dissidents. <laughs> and uh, this was in, uh, in the beginning of the 80s. So. And this was um, connected um, with the developments in Poland because uh, when I came from the, my um, service at the army to, to study in Sofia sociology, this was in 1980. So this was the time of um, um, Solidarność. And um, uh, I remember that I heard um, very often by the Western radio station Free Europe and uh, Radio Liberty, the Voice of America, uh, about the developments in, in uh, Poland. So uh, this uh, was the time when I uh, began to be opposite to the, to the uh, regime. I was arrested in 1985, in February, and I was in the uh, arrest of the state security, as I was alone. But I heard the radio of the guards who were in the, uh, in the corridor of the uh, arrest, the, uh, the, uh, the, um, some about Mikhail Gorbachev. So, and after that, um, uh, I was with one Turk uh, uh, who was arrested uh, uh, too in, uh, in the uh, room and I asked him uh, on the corridor was, were por uh, pictures of the Soviet Politburo and asked him uh, look please who will be the, the, the next secretary because he said uh, there is some de uh, dead, the Chernenko is dead. And he came and said, I don't know this man, who is this man? <laughs> but um, um, this was the moment after the election of uh, appointment of Mikhail Gorbachev and the beginning of uh, uh, Perestroika and Glasnost that uh, the, the, the history is going, uh, it cannot be stopped, the, the change. This, uh, uh, but I have to say, uh, be, being in the uh, prison, in the arrest, um, when uh, I was investigated by the officer of the communist state security, I was alone. And um, he, uh, this is usual tactics of the, uh, the such uh, state security officers. Uh, they say, you are alone, we are all uh, 
very powerful. Uh, outside of this building, you have uh, not support. And I uh, ever remember the solidarity uh, that in Poland there is there. Um, I don't know that that time somebody from Poland, <laughs> but uh, I heard uh, by the radio station, and this was uh, this uh, gave me uh, to be more strong, to be to be uh, more. Um, um, uh, this this gives me um, energy <laughs> to be uh, to be alone, but uh, not to give up uh, to these uh, officers. 1989, uh, um, the uh, it was a change in Bulgaria. There was um, internal change of the Communist Party. They replaced the dictator Zhivkov to another. Uh, Communist Party uh, Politburo member, Mladenov. This was uh, one day after the opening of the Berlin Wall in Berlin on the 10th of November 1989. And uh, after that, I was uh, outside of prison at that time. I was in prison only one year. And we started to establish in uh, my city Plovdiv, uh, 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 opposition union, and there were some uh, other former prisoners from social democrats, agrarian union uh, members, uh, elderly people, and uh, they were uh, in 1990 elections. I, I have to say, until now, there is not real change in uh, Bulgaria. After some years of uh, so democratic developments, uh, the former communist uh, state security officers and the nomenclatura of the Communist Party, they took the economic power again. They privatis uh, they make the privatization of the uh, plants and the uh, uh, eco economic uh, uh, facilities, economic facilities, and uh, now they control the media, they, there is not lustration law, and they created several political um, mimicry parties, such imitation. They established nationalist parties, social democratic party. they established uh, democratic parties. And the most important uh, lesson what we have to learn from Poland and from the uh, solidarity uh, what I, uh, when I speak with young people, they uh, is that uh, they uh, uh, they uh, have to be authentic citizen movements, authentic workers movements, authentic I think leftist movements. We didn't have in Bulgaria such movement now, uh, but if we have many uh, parties controlled by the former communists with very good names. So the, the most important lessons to, to young people and to what I, when I talk with my son, for example, is that uh, people have to, with own resources, uh, with own powers, uh, organize them, not to expect somebody to establish them a party or a movement or to come from America or from the Western Europe to to, for, to bring liberty. Liberty has to be uh, um, uh, the, the struggle of liberty. This is the example of uh, the workers of Dansk and of uh, Poland. They uh, started this movement with own, uh, by themselves. So this is the most important lesson what we have uh, from, from this uh, period. In December 1989, when we established in my city of Plovdiv, uh, opposition union, we asked the, the Communist Party to, uh, to make a round table in Plovdiv. And I remember <laughs> I, uh, there was a, a meeting of the opposition members. There were about 30 people, and I, I was very young at that time, and that said, Vasil, you have to write this and to bring this to the Communist Party newspaper. And I go at home, 
next day in the morning i uh, because this there was not electricity and that meeting so nobody make notices and i only heard her with, uh, what they decided and uh, after that in the, in the morning i said uh, sit to, to my uh, machine uh, writing machine and it's just uh, in my, uh, one moment i uh, imagine that is very important that i'm writing now 45 years uh, communist rule, and I am writing the uh, demands uh, of the opposition to the Communist Party. It was the demand of round table, and I brought this to the uh, um, editor of the local Communist Party uh, uh, newspaper, so it was, to publish this, and he read, read this and said, wow, oh, this is <laughs> important, and the next week we set to, uh, to such a round table. There was not so uh, national issues discussed on this round table, but for our cities, uh, 300,000 people in Plovdiv, which was important uh, moment, this round table. And this was the model of the Polish uh, round table. You know that uh, Hannah Arendt and other, other philosophers say that the totalitarian regimes are not only caused, caused by the, some dictator, they are caused by the people who uh, agree with such uh, uh, regime. So, and I think uh, this process of democratization in Bulgaria is not finished. They have a long way to be gone, to, to, to go. And this give me, uh, bring me some hope that uh, the new generation is active and I uh, try to be with uh, them uh, to, uh, to support and to be uh, active too, to move the, the democratic society further in our country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.